Your ears are incredible instruments. Not only can they hear trillions and distinguish between trillions of levels, they also detect the rate of those waves. If we were to play the fattest string uh, on an acoustic guitar, the low E, then it would sound like this. We perceive that as being an E on the musical scale, but what actually really happened was that your eardrums were pushed and pulled back and forth in sympathy with that vibrating string. And your ear and brain combination countered that perfectly. Oh, I know what that is. It's 82.4 times a second, and you just perceive that as being an E. The second string is 110 cycles per second, or an A. And then here are all the different rates for all the other uh, strings. By the way, a shortcut for saying 110 compressions of air pressure waves a second is just to say 110 hertz. So whenever you hear someone say 440 hertz, for example, it's just saying the sound wave is vibrating 440 times a second. Once we get into thousands of hertz, we then uh, call them kilohertz. It's said that humans hear roughly from about uh, 20 hertz to 20 uh, kilohertz or, or waveforms that cycle from 20 times to 20,000 times per second. But you know what? We tend to lose our top end as we age. So basically, we've all seen this spectrum of light where we took a prism at, in the science class and all uh, uh, basically white light can be split up into all of these different frequencies here, all the way from blues out to reds. Now, the same thing happens with sound and you go from lows to highs, basically from things like a double bass all the way up to a xylophone. So if we were to have everything from the lows to the highs, we can start mapping out all of these hertz going from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. Now, uh, as we age, this tends to, um, uh, we tend to lose our top end, but as a general rule, humans hear from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz right there. So that's basically a 20 kilohertz range. And here's what I wanna challenge you. Where do you think the mid range of that range would be. If it's basically from 0 to 20K, you would think that the mid-range in human hearing would be around 10K, right? That would seem to make sense, but you'd absolutely be dead wrong. And here is exactly why. We noticed um, uh, when we looked at the guitar string before, if you fret a guitar up at about the 12th fret, you will double it. In other words, every octave you go up, will double the frequency. So octave one will be 40. The next octave will be 80 or double that, then 160 and so on and so on until you get up to the very top end, 2.5. The next one should be 5K, next one should be 10K, next one should be 20K. So you'll notice that the octave relationship is linear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But the Hertz relationship is exponential. So that's why we really missed out when we said before that 10K should be the, the mid-range. Absolutely not. 10K is just one octave down from the very top. That's why we got into, into trouble there. The actual the mid-range is around uh, one kilohertz. So why am I going on all about this exponential uh, relationship anyway? Let's imagine we had two engineers that were arguing over where the thump of a kick drum is. And the first engineer said, I believe it's around 60 hertz. So if I wanted to EQ and bring out the thump of this kick drum, I'm gonna dial in about 60 hertz. And the, and the second engineer says, no way. The thump of the kick drum is about 560 hertz. And you're like, okay, well, they're not really agreeing on this. One is right and one is wrong. We'll, we'll work that out in a second. But let's imagine they were also talking about the sheen of a vocal. And engineer A says, you know what? The sheen of a vocal is around 13K. And the engineer B says, no way. I think the sheen of a vocal is around 15K. So let's look at the relationship between um, each of these two different engineers and how they, they really can't agree on these two uh, things going on here. In terms of the thump, look at the span between 60 hertz and 560 hertz. It's about 500 hertz or about a half a K. But then look at the relationship between the 13K and 15K. You have two 
kilohertz difference. Basically, it looks like it's four times the range between the 13K and 15K. Now, here's the interesting thing is that in terms of the thump of the kick drum, engineer A is right. The thump of the kick drum is around 60 hertz, you know, give, a, a, give or take a few hertz. It ain't anywhere near 560 hertz. If you, st if you start looking for the thump of the kick drum at 560 hertz, you have missed it by a long mile. But here's the tricky thing. Over on the Sheen thing, 13K could be right and 15K could kind of be right. So how is that possible when you have a 2K difference on the right hand side and I would kind of say potato, potato, you know, it could be either 13 or 15K if you wanted to bring out the sheen of a vocal. How could that be? Well, let's go back to our scale across here and let's look at 60 Hertz. That's engineer A. He said the thump of the, of the kick drum is there. And then look at 560 Hertz. Whoa, that is a massive gap there. And that shows you why engineer A was correct when he said 60 Hertz was correct. Now, and, and, and the 560 Hertz is absolutely not. But now let's, let's map out 13K and 15K. Remember how I said it was exponential? Here's 13K and here's 15K. It's almost identical. So that's why you really need to know your numbers. You need to know your numbers across the frequency uh, spectrum uh, in, in all situations, but you really need to know them the lower you go because if you're out by a few hundred hertz on the low end, you could completely miss the mark, but a few hundred hertz up the top end is really not that much of a difference.